The intent of the following training videos is to assist testers in complying with district rules and regulations when conducting required vapor recovery tests. These videos focus on areas the district has identified during test witnesses as common mistakes. It is recommended that the following videos be used for training purposes only and not as a substitute for the applicable test procedures, executive orders, and permit conditions as these documents are revised periodically and the videos may not reflect current requirements. Annual testing for most gasoline dispensing facilities is required at least once per year, 45 days prior to the first day of the district permit renewal month. For example, if the permit renewal date is August 31, 2013, annual testing must be successfully conducted no earlier than June 17, 2013, but no later than July 31, 2013. Required annual tests are specified in the applicable state executive order and summarized in the following district permit attachments. Attachment A for underground storage tanks with vacuum assist systems. Attachment L for underground storage tanks with balance systems. And attachment B for all above ground storage tanks. These permit attachments are located on the district's website as shown here. The permit to your testing contractor must notify the district on an approved test notification form 15 calendar days prior to any testing. Notifications can be submitted to the district via mail, fax, email, or in person. Notification forms like the permit attachments are also found on the district's website as shown here. To better comply with district rules and regulations, it is recommended testers keep a current copy of test procedures and permit attachments available for reference during testing at all times. In addition, Testers must have the required certifications or be directly supervised by someone on site who holds the required certifications as specified in Permit Attachment K. Current copies of the certifications and equipment calibration must be on site during the test. Please be aware tests not conducted in accordance with test procedures or district rules and regulations may be invalidated and the testing company as well as the GDF operator may be subject to enforcement action. Prior testing it is also important to inspect the equipment and verify the components are certified and the system is installed and operating as permitted. For example, if ISD is installed, testing should never be done during any vapor recovery alarm. Also, it is recommended the tester visually inspect the equipment to better ensure it is free of defects and in proper working order. Testing should always be done in an as-found or as-is certified configuration. Additionally, testers must ensure their testing equipment meets the specifications of the applicable procedure. These specifications include accuracy, range, and calibration requirements. Testing conducted with equipment that does not meet the required testing specifications may be invalidated. It is important that testers know the proper test sequencing before beginning any test. Proper test sequencing ensures ongoing compliance and proper test procedures are conducted. It is highly recommended that testers review the required test sequencing found in Permit Attachments A B and L discussed previously in the video. Please be aware tests conducted out of the required sequence may be invalidated. Complying with the test time specified in the notification is important to allow the district the option of witnessing the test. Once the tester begins the first test, all required tests must be conducted in sequence without replacing or modifying any components. Testing is considered to have begun when any portion of the test procedure has commenced, including pre-test procedures. For example, test procedures such as warming up the digital manometer per Exhibit 4 of Executive Order 201, measuring submerged fill pipes per TP201.1D, or removing the PV valve per TP201.1E are all considered the start times of those tests. It is important to note that rescheduled tests may put the operator outside of the 45-day test window due to the 15 calendar day notification requirement and subject to enforcement action. Due to the many potential hazards involved with vapor recovery testing, it is extremely important that testers take all necessary precautions to conduct the test in a safe manner. Staff should be mindful of traffic, grounding requirements, and any work practices that may lead to an unsafe environment. Additionally, and in order to make an accurate compliance determination, testing should be completed regardless of any impending failures, nor should any troubleshooting be performed once the test has begun. Not only must the test be conducted per the procedures and district requirements, but only certified testers as outlined in Attachment K in the Permit to Operate are allowed to conduct tests. Certified staff must be on-site and directly overseeing all tests. 
a current copy of all applicable training certifications must be maintained with the tester and readily available at all times. In order to ensure that all test data obtained is complete and accurate, the tester must record all required test data as each test is being conducted. The tester shall accurately record all raw data during each test as read directly from the test equipment and include all numerical digits regardless of the significant digit of the standard. The final test results should be rounded to the nearest significant digit of the standard specified. For example, the standard for the vapor to liquid test is 0.95 to 1.15, the significant digit being the 100th digit. When using a tri-tester, the tester should record the raw data to the nearest 1,000th, for example 1.145. The final result in this case would be rounded from 1.145 to 1.15, which is the 100th digit and the significant digit of the standard. This value is then recorded on the data form as the final vapor to liquid result. In order to ensure all required test data is submitted, the district requires the use of approved test data forms which can be found at the link shown here. Incomplete forms or inaccurate data may result in the annual test being invalidated and potential compliance action taken. Examples of tests being invalidated due to inaccurate data or incomplete forms for the test shown here are failure to record calibration dates, required submerged fill pipe measurements, and use of correct units of measurement. As the district can only make compliance determinations from the data submitted, it is required that data forms are complete and accurate. Since the district cannot make any assumptions from the submitted data, it is highly recommended that testers implement a quality control program to ensure proper reporting and compliance with district requirements. Please don't forget, all test data must be submitted on district approved forms and must be submitted within 15 calendar days of the test. District staff are always available to provide compliance assistance. Should you have any questions, please feel free to contact the district at any of the numbers referenced here. Additionally, contractors can receive updates related to district vapor recovery forms, permit attachments, and related policies by subscribing to the district list server. Updates related to ARB advisories, executive orders, related regulations, and test procedures can also be obtained by subscribing to the ARB list server. By subscribing to these list servers, testers will stay current with vapor recovery requirements, test data forms, and better ensure ongoing compliance.